Today we're taking a short break from fresh water and quickly setting up a saltwater aquarium. For those that aren't familiar with my situation out here in the aquarium gallery and my saltwater tank, let me bring you guys up to speed first. As some of you will remember, several months ago I set up a drop-off aquarium and we turned it into a saltwater tank. However, the drop-off tank does not fit out in the aquarium gallery, and I don't plan to have that set up out here anyways. You see, a couple of these 10 120 gallon aquariums are going to be saltwater tanks. Just not right away, you see. While I need to get tanks out of the house, I also need to buy myself some time, which brings the cube into play. Now the cube, if you guys will remember, I built the aquarium, I built the stand, and we uh, turned it into a planted aquarium a while back, eventually shutting it down, and then Frank the Flowerhorn took over it for a short while. In fact, here he comes now. Now this tank fits perfectly right here, right beside my office area, and I can still get by. And this is going to serve as a temporary system until I have one of the 120s ready to set up as salt water. In fact, we have to do a minimum of two because I'm connecting them to the same sump. So what I've done so far with this tank is simple. I buffed out all of the scratches that were on it, making it pretty much brand new once again. I also uh, painted the back and bottom black, and then of course painted the same stand that I already had black as well, so it kind of fits in with the rest of the stuff out here. Again, this is only temporary, but for a temporary system, I think it's gonna be pretty nice. However, this tank wasn't plumb, so I had to drill a couple of holes in the back and install a couple of bulkheads for the return as well as drain. The next thing I did was install a sump. Now to make something extremely clear here, a sump is not a filter, at least not yet. A sump by definition is just a, 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 an empty tank, something to hold water. You then take that sump and turn it into a filter. And when it comes to saltwater aquariums, believe it or not, they are ridiculously simple. A lot of the times they have a pre-filter, a heater, a pump, possibly some um, live rock or some macro algae, uh, and of course a protein skimmer. So all I've done so far to keep this very simple is I took a filter sock and clamped it to the back of the clamp. If it overflows, it'll overflow into the tank here. And this is just the drain from the main aquarium. I also installed a pump, which is returning the water to the main tank, as well as a heater. And that's pretty much it. I'm also going to add in some of the biological media from the drop-off aquarium and potentially a skimmer. But again, this is how simple it can be. You don't have to complicate it. So today I spent my time um, creating the salt water and bringing it up to temperature. It's actually getting quite late and everybody's in bed uh, right now. So we're gonna have to sneak in there and get all the rock, all the fish, uh, as well as all of the coral out of that tank and then transfer it in here. I'm not sure how I'm going to escape the rock in this tank because we're going from a drop-off tank to a cube tank, but I'm pretty excited to see what we can come up with. Okay, so here's the game plan. I've got three buckets. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to each bucket from the tank. One bucket will hold fish, one bucket will hold the coral, and one bucket will hold the rock. This should buy me some time to be able to bring everybody outside, escape the tank, add in the coral, and add the fish back in. So just like I said, all of the coral in there, they're all kind of sucked in right now. Hopefully they're going to be okay. Some were cemented to the rock. Uh, others were just in place. I've got some more uh, coral glue. So uh, I figured taking them off and starting from scratch with the rock, which is in this bucket, was my best bet. Uh, so I'm not committed to any pieces in any sort of way. I just rip them off and start over. The wildlife or fish and, uh, you know, crabs and snails are in here. Couple things to note. Clowns are getting bigger. Boy, aren't they handsome. Um, but I had three Bangai 
uh, Cardinals. And now I only have two. And this is news to me. <laughs> I don't know where the third one went. I do know that um, they were not all getting along. So I wonder if it was killed and eaten. Or did it get into the filter? Or did it jump out of the tank? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. But we don't have time to tonight. Um, perhaps when I rip this tank down completely, I'll be able to figure it out. Also forgot to mention I had about a gallon of Marine Pure Biological Media in the tank and then a little pouch of activated carbon. Uh, this media used to be white, now it's a nice, you know, golden brown indicating it's, you know, coated and being inhabited by beneficial bacteria. I'll just toss this loosely in the sump and uh, that will do for now. Okay, so I couldn't find that extra... Uh, bang guy anywhere. I looked everywhere. It really bothered me. Uh, clearly, I need to know where my fish are. Um, nothing in the tank, nothing around the tank, nothing outside of the tank. Maybe it jumped and my dog ate it, or maybe it got killed in the tank and the cleanup crew disposed of it. Ultimately, I will admit that tank's kind of been neglected in terms of maintenance and, you know, truly keeping a close eye on it simply because I'm out here in the gallery so much, which is another reason for bringing all of my tanks out here. I'm gonna be out here so much that I'm not gonna have a lot of time uh, to devote to the tanks inside. So we're gonna start off with this tank, um, adding in the rock. Uh, I hope to create, you know, I was just thinking something I could do off the top of my head is maybe create like a U shape in the back or maybe a big uh, rock rubble just piled up. We'll see what happens though, but we need to get started. I'm not entirely sure I like it. I think I'm gonna change it. This time, let's shoot for bringing it to the center a little bit more um, and potentially more of a rock pile. All right, so the water still needs to clear a little bit, but you can get a really good idea of what I've come up with. I went with a couple of islands, you know, uh, Every time I scape, I've got a plan. I think I know what I want to do till I start putting the materials in there. And I come up with a little something different. Uh, I'm really happy with this one though. Uh, leaves plenty of room, plenty of swimming space for the fish. Plus, uh, it's going to give me the ability to kind of create two different pedestals of coral. Maybe have them contrast. I'm not sure where I'm going to put my coral yet. But um, to give you the thought process here, I thought that this created a little bit more depth. The camera's not really picking it up from what I see in person though, but uh, I don't know. I really like it. I like it a lot. Let me know what you guys think, but I got to move on to coral now. I might have to glue a few of these in place and to do so, I'm using the uh, Ecotech coral glue. I got free samples at their booth when I was at uh, Reef of Palooza. I'm not one to get free samples a lot of the times, but uh, this stuff certainly is going to come in handy. Coral's in. I suspect it's going to take a few days for these guys to bounce back, but again, we're going to check back in the morning here after we get the fish in and cross our fingers and hope everybody's okay. So now we can get a better look and a, you know, a better idea of the rock layout. Let's take a look at that first. Um, I have to adjust the plumbing to get the water level a little higher there, but you know, ultimately my goal here was just to get everything up and running, you know, and uh, focus on the smaller stuff later on. Uh, however, I really like how the rock work turned out. Mind you, this, is, this, this rock structure here is three rocks. There's a tiny little one out front, uh, a, a more of a boulder right here, and then another one standing up. And that might look like it's gonna fall over, but it's seated in there quite well. Uh, and same with the back, that's only two rocks. There's a big rock on the bottom, smaller one kind of piled up. Now I was worried that they wouldn't look all that natural, but to me they kind of look like they are one piece. 
uh, another small rock out front here. And again, that's not part of the main structure, but it kind of gives the illusion that it is, makes it look like it's a much larger piece of rock than it is. Uh, and then one in the back. Uh, I've added that simply because it looked kind of bare back there. And, um, you know, I just like the dynamic here of, um, you know, the depth created with these two pieces. But, uh, you know, a little bit of your eyes are drawn to the back to kind of look there. And the fish enjoy it as well. Clownfish out and about as normal. These guys are always happy. Um, funny thing about them though, they're one of the meanest fish I've ever kept, believe it or not. Who would have thought Nemo was so mean? Uh, I put my hands in there and they will bite me. It doesn't hurt, but I mean, it's surprising to have these tiny little fish attacking you like a, you know, a couple of guard dogs. Uh, the female is right here up top and the male below. Female will always be bigger. And then of course, the bang guys in the back, there's one there. Uh, these guys are not as, um, you know, out like these guys are just yet, but they will be, just give them some time. Uh, as for the coral, what do we have here? The pulsing Xenia is already, you know, kind of opened up a bit, which is really great. Now, some of you said like, this is gonna take over the whole tank. So what I decided to do was place it on its own rock. That way I can move it out of the way or, you know, separate it from everything else if I needed to. Um, we've got a little Duncan right here. These guys are really cool. Now, I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up, but it's like a, uh, almost like a neon green arms to it. Uh, another Duncan over right there, if you can see it. Oh, that's the reflection. But yeah, right there is another Duncan. Maybe we can get a uh, closer look at it. Um, but yeah, everything's opened up. Everything's doing fine. The only thing that hasn't is the Rasta in the back there. If you can see it, but that usually takes the longest to open after it's been moved, I found, even though it's like one of the easiest coral to keep in here. However, all of the coral in here are. Uh, from what I've told, been told and from what my experience is, oh, and there's another Duncan out, out on that coral back there. But um, at least I think that's what all these things are called. I don't spend enough time researching and looking up names and whatnot. You know, I just look at them and think, oh, that's pretty. Um, oh, that one moves, things like that. I mean, I'm such a noob when it comes to salt water, but clearly I can keep them alive and I know enough to, you know, get me by. And over time, clearly just like anybody else, I'll learn and I'll get better. Uh, but I think it looks pretty good. I think it turned out really well. Clearly, uh, again, this would look much better with more coral, maybe more rock or something like that. But uh, Time will tell what happens with this tank, but there's a couple of things I really need to point out here. This system is an extremely simple aquarium. We have a few rocks, a bare tank. I mean, uh, I know a lot of people that are scared to get into the saltwater hobby are worried about two things. One, difficulty. Two, the price. All of the coral in here uh, was anywhere from nine to like 15 or 20 bucks, which is pretty cheap considering what I was expecting. Uh, sometimes in the planted aquarium hobby, for example, you can buy a little cup of tissue culture plant. You might pay 10 to $12 for that. So it's very comparable. And luckily for me, for once, I'm attracted to the cheaper corals. Uh, I'm really excited about that because I typically, you know, I'm cursed with, you know, liking something and then I hear the price on it and I'm always attracted to some of the more higher end and more expensive stuff. But I, maybe this is what most people get into with these types of coral is a lot of these cheaper stuff. Um, with that said, I mean, if we kind of really break down what we have here, we have a random aquarium that was a freshwater tank. We drilled the back, tossed some bulkheads on it, and that leads down to, you know, a, a very basic sump. You guys have seen this. This could have been a, you know, a Rubbermaid container for all we care. It's in the sump. I just needed, to, or it's in the stand. I just needed to hold water. I don't need it to look pretty. Um, I just needed to hold water and do what I need it to do. Overall though, I set this entire tank up within a few hours. It wasn't a complicated process. Mixed the salt, brought it up to temperature, hooked up the sump, got the pump running, you know, and you know, kind of went from there. Now clearly, um, to move them from one tank to the other, one of the things I didn't include in the video, just for time uh, wise, is acclimating them to the tank. I did do a drip. Um, so ultimately, you know, perhaps this might get a few of you guys that have freshwater tanks interested in salt. I'm not trying to push you towards it. You guys know I'm heavily involved in fresh, but I kind of just want to point out that how simple things can be uh, and uh, 
how easy it can be. Moving forward, my maintenance on this tank is feeding the tank, feeding the fish, which is a lot of fun, and uh, doing some water changes. Once a week, I'll mix up, you know, five gallons of water, drain five gallons of water into one bucket and dump the, the new bucket in, and you know, it's as simple as that. Uh, other than that though, I mean, we've got it out here. It's one more tank set up, even though this is just temporary, but you know, it's one step closer to getting the gallery completed. With this one done, you know, I really need to focus on that 375 gallon tank. However, we also have to juggle the racking system and start setting that up because fish are coming and I got a lot coming. So we gotta, we gotta make sure we stay on top of things. See the bang guys already out here. I mean, it, I mean, this this tank is recovering rapidly. We're only six or eight hours into it, you know, being uh, stocked here, and everything's responding nicely, which is good. Uh, anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed the, uh, today's video, and uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, and what I do is something you're interested in, I highly suggest you do, because I got some really cool videos coming out. I do my best to make sure every single video is my best video yet. So if you don't want to miss any of this, make sure that you subscribe.